Welcome to the Intro Zone, a show about the Microsoft 365 Intelligent Intro. I'm Chris McNulty, here today, once again, with my Partner Edition co-host, Mark Cashman. That is correct, Chris and I. No crime. We are just partners in this podcast talking about Microsoft Partners, and I'm very excited to be here, Chris. Our mission is delivering solutions for individuals and organizations to help them achieve more. And it's something that we are joined in with our partners. Each month we sit down with one of our partner organizations who deliver solutions throughout Microsoft 365 to learn more about them and from their customers. On this next episode, this one that you're listening to right now, the partner series of the Interzone, we're talking with our partner Hamish Toll, who is the founder and director of Circle T, and a special conversation with his customer, David Benjamin, who is a CIO at Millennium Services Group. Millennium is really interesting because, you know, from their background, they deal with security and maintenance and cleaning in Australia. But they, they go through so many of the things that we hear other customers struggle with all the time, like needs for compliance and how policy gets maintained. And how do you reorganize information and people after a merger? You know, they're a very distributed group. They they have a very you know centralized focus in what they offer to their customers, uh, but they're on site often. They do a lot of cleaning services at scale for commercial businesses. Uh, they offer a lot of security services. So again, on site. So a, a lot of their workforce is distributed. And what we found out and, and then what they told us as part of the solution was a lot of the work that they did was to bring all of those people together, the mind share, and also to bring back from being on site. So there was knowledge uh, and certainly that sharing and very close to home. I thought one of the really interesting points that we hit on, which you just kind of teed up, was they really did have a need to have things very policy driven, very programmatically accessible, uh, and a lot of learning that came from what they brought as that knowledge from on site for other people to learn or to track and manage if it was something like a litigation of a, a slip and fall accident. The other part of uh, today I'm looking forward to doing is catching up with Hamish. So, you know, Circle T is an organization, a partner org that's a lot like, started like many of our partner organizations, a small to mid-sized team of folks. They are based in Eastern Australia and they kind of have grown up and around the SharePoint ecosystem. And over the past few years, as we kind of established and have grown that content services program for our partners, they applied. They've applied and joined kind of at the highest levels. As we've been rolling Cortex out, you know, I can count when we offer training on Cortex, we'll get 10 or 20 people to sign up from Circle T. So they're very engaged with their community down under with setting up lots of interesting receptions or breakfast things. And they, they tend to bring their customers together into these social fora. Um, they're doing one next week that's going to be virtual that I'm helping them with, but it's really encouraging to see there's a certain continuity, you know, with the, with SharePoint for a number of years, right? If you could 2007, 2010, 2013, and the conferences around that, and there were a bunch of known players, right? Mm -hmm. And then we sort of had, I'll just call them the plateau years, 2013 through 2016. We're winding down SharePoint conference and there were some integrations and mergers going on. I do think that the past four or five years, if you look though at the growth curve that M365 has been on, SharePoint has been on, you've had all of these newer players coming into the space. In SharePoint history, you know, you've got, you know, major folks out there like Sue Hanley and Joel Olson and um, people who have been mainstays of that community for a long time. And it's really encouraging and refreshing to see a whole bunch of new blood coming into the space. Uh, one thing I especially want to note about Circle T is Circle T is one of our most valued partners at Microsoft. They are one of a very small number of partners who've been recognized as Microsoft preferred in our content services partner program. And that is our initiative to help our partners work with Microsoft, work with our customers to do more with content services, with compliance, with content management, with knowledge and with Project Cortex. So we're really honored to be able to sit down with Circle T and with Millennium today. One of the things that's uh, stood out and similar to what you're saying is they have actually built a collection of products they call Kasama that's all about accelerating Office 365 adoption. And, and that's probably not so new, but I think if you go back five or six years ago, it was one of those early wrapping around 
uh, you know, from a partner perspective to be able to take that on because for everybody it was new at scale uh, or it was different because it wasn't on premises. What Hamish has in the Circle T literature, it also highlights almost before they talk about technology is that notion of how they want to help cultivate an inclusivity notion at companies that they work with. So they have the ability to help you onboard to Office 365 to you know learn about and how to adopt more of the services, technical aspects of building components that you don't have that need to be custom. Beyond that, though, there is, but how do people actually need to work together and how can you bring it so that people who may feel a little disconnected from headquarters or, you know, different levels, different skill sets, different jobs and roles, that inclusive nature, you know, how to build an inclusive company that resonated with me as something unique. But at the same time, something just as necessary as how can I accelerate, you know, Office 365 adoption? That is important. But if it resonates with the end users and the collective whole, that it brings them, you know, more closely together for work, more closely together for how they work together. That that was really interesting. Here's another thing that's interesting, at least to me. I was just looking up my notes on Kisama and I got a hit on MSN News. Kasama, the much anticipated Filipino restaurant, sells out of food on opening day <laughs> in the Ukrainian village. You know, I, I think looking at engagement and inclusivity and employee well being, it's certainly possible they've expanded into food service. But. <laughs> it's possible. We'll, we'll check with Hamish. We have spent more than enough time clearing our throats. So, Mark, what do you say that we invite our guests in for the day? I think that is a fabulous idea. So today on The IntraZone, Mark and I are privileged to be able to welcome one of our great customers and partners. So we're sitting down today with David from Millennium Services Group and with Hamish from Circle T. Gentlemen, welcome to The IntraZone. Thanks very much, Chris. Chris. It's a pleasure to be here. It's been a crazy year. So let me just start by making it a little more personal. How are you today? So, David, I might jump in there first. Um, I'm a very, very lucky to be up in northern Victoria. Uh, we've been through one of the, uh, I think, one of the longest lockdowns in the world with two phases of COVID. But um, personally, I'm in a good place that I'm up on two and a half thousand acres up on a farm. So, we're lucky in Australia. We've got great connectivity. So, I can run I mean, my entire business 250 kilometres from the city and 250 kilometres from one of our favourite customers in Millennium. Across to you, David. Thanks, Hamish. How am I feeling? Well, we're into, I think it's week 11 of lockdown in Melbourne. We're living under restrictions of traveling no further than five kilometers from home. I'm unable to leave Melbourne and it's becoming quite a challenge, I think, for everybody living in the city. And we're all optimistic and looking forward to a time when we can start living life again, not going back to normal, but learning to live uh, with this virus. But otherwise, I'm well and I haven't contracted the virus. I'm very grateful for that. We're lucky and fortunate to have you. And and we also know just from part of what we'd like to talk about today is a lot of what COVID brought about was this notion of change, both for you as a company working together or now apart, but also with a lot of what your company at Millennium focuses on, which is the cleaning side. There are multiple parts to Millennium Services, but knowing that that's a a big part of, um, you know, what's come into play, maybe even more myopic because of COVID. Um, but really pleased to hear that you're both doing okay. And and I think we can collectively agree we all would love to get back to anything that feels closer to normal, even though that may be weeks and months. And, you know, and something that feels like normal is traveling. And, you know, it's been a few years since I've been able to get down to Australia. So uh, there is a part of me that, you know, is a little jealous that you get to spend so much time in close proximity to places like Manly Beach or In the case of Melbourne, you know, I love the fact, and our audience may not realize this, it's the only city park I've ever seen, if you go down to St. Kilda, where there's actually penguins in the park. And we, you know, up here in the Northern Hemisphere, we see penguins as this crazy exotic bird. And of course they are, but they're just, you can take the city bus to go see some penguins. It's really a great part of the world. David, I'd love to get a sense from you, kind of, how has your career unfolded? You know, talk a little bit about you know, what your journey has been during your tenure at Millennium Services. Sure. Thanks, Chris. 
my background, uh, I joined Millennium around two years ago um, and I took up the role of Chief Information Officer uh, and that was the first time uh, the role was created at Millennium and I guess for me indicated the focus of the company was placing on technology and the recognition of what technology could do to help the organisation move forward. Prior to Millennium, I'd spent uh, 10 years at a large Australian bank, so I'd come out of the financial industry. And I guess over my career, technology has enabled me to work in many different vertical industries, such as government, manufacturing, obviously financial, and now in a a services-based industry. So that's given me, I guess, a broad exposure. And I guess along the way, I've generally been working with Microsoft products over those last 20 to 25 years. Millennium itself, as you uh, highlighted earlier, is a company providing two core services to its clients, namely cleaning and security services. And those are generally provided in large shopping centres or malls uh, across Australia and New Zealand, uh, along with corporate and government office buildings and also large public events. So anything where there's a a broad need for cleaning or security services, Millennium is offering that uh, to its clients. Uh, We have approximately 600 sites where we have staff generally working in those areas. And when I started with Millennium, the technology was uh, quite disparate, Um, It was not integrated at all. A lot of the systems were not connected. It was difficult uh, to collaborate. So my personal experience of coming out of a large bank was quite challenging in in terms of just being able to communicate with people or uh, collaborate, setting up meetings. Uh, It was quite a challenging environment uh, from that perspective. And through both your role within the banking industry and now with Millennium, my assumption is you're no stranger to regulation and policy. Uh, And certainly some of what Hamish and team helped implement, um, you know, we want to dig into understanding what type of content that you work with, how it uh, impacts and how it affects the people and the different services that you offer. But any um, big insights in terms of what you learned over the 10 years within banking and then taking up the reins as CIO, some of those first things that you just wanted to ensure uh, either were implemented with what you knew or just needed to be cleaned up as as there was this uh, new role and a need to kind of guide the company in the right direction. Yeah, thanks, Mark. The main area for me coming out of a bank, security is paramount and and security of data in that respect, but also governance, governance of procedures and policies. So coming out of a bank that was drilled into me and part of my DNA in terms of how I would operate within an IT environment. Coming into Millennium, there were areas that were, I guess, lacking and they were the focus areas for me, uh, at least initially, to plan out a roadmap to bring those up to a level um, that was more appropriate to start securing data and information uh, and how it related to the businesses. Keeping in mind, obviously, the businesses were quite different going from a bank to a, a services company, but I also found that some of the challenges were very much the same in that it's always important to secure corporate data uh, and being able to manage and maintain that data, but more importantly, how to locate that data. And having worked previously uh, with Hamish uh, in my last role at the bank uh, and with Circle T, uh, it made sense for me to engage with Circle T as a, a valued Microsoft partner to help me on that journey and implement some of those tools and and procedures into Millennium. We're going to go a little more deeply into what that looks like because there's some really great stuff I think our audience could learn from. But I also want to, uh, Hamish, would love to have you kind of walk our audience through kind of what your journey has been like, what, you know, your history with Microsoft has been and, you know, how did you get hired by Circle T, what your journey has been like with them? Yeah, thanks, Chris. I've had a very long history with Microsoft, and I was just thinking um, about that as you were, um, you guys were asking David the same question. And 
it's such a, a such geeky beginning, but I remember having a, a PC way, way, way back in the day when I think it was Warcraft 1 was around and uh, a mate of mine picked up some floppy disks and I think it had the very early version of VB sitting on it. So I think I was probably about 10 years old or so, probably just slightly older, and we had a crack at um, putting together an application without any training. And that's kind of Microsoft journey. So it was a very, very long time ago. From that point on, I got involved with uh, SharePoint when it was first released back in 2001 and have effectively been on the journey ever since. Had a, um, a bit of time spent in Europe where I worked with Microsoft uh, directly um, as a rapid response engineer. So going out to situations when SharePoint slash the um, Microsoft collaboration platform wasn't done well and then stabilizing. From that point, returned to Australia, set up um, Circle T as an organization focused on doing the collabor- the Microsoft collaboration platform right. Um, and what we've effectively done is had designs and ran Office, so ran um, the Microsoft collaboration stack Kind of like Microsoft, obviously, doing now with Office 365. Um, Treat it with a lot of care and respect when it was run internally, um, ensure that there were a whole lot of governance rules around it. Um, that meant that we had work in, for example, um, some of the large Australian banks and so forth in regard to having large enterprises running the Microsoft platform internally in a super well-governed way. Uh, as soon as BPOS came along, slash then Office 365, we jumped onto that as a platform, knowing that that was the future. Um, and from that point, sort of built up Circle T to a point now that we have um, have just over 20 staff, but we have a really strong focus on automation. So we ensure that what we're doing can be reused over and over and over to bring best value to our customers. In regard to working for Circle T, um, effectively, uh, it's been very much a referral process. Friends, colleagues, and so forth have referred each other, and but we're always on the lookout for highly skilled individuals. We have uh, a few customers internationally as well, so we're always on the lookout for people who might want to um, work with us and support us internationally as well. I think Hamish and David, hearing both your backgrounds and moving into you know how you're now working together, part of what I think would be interesting for the audience, and I think give us a, a foundation for a couple of things to to talk about. Some of which you know we know about before, and I think we're discovering now. There's this foundation of Office 365 as a destination. It's a it's a background that Hamish and team you know have refined and offered to a number of large customers and and customers throughout the world, and knowing that this um, focus with cleaning and security for large retailers, malls, large events, you know, just trying to understand the space of where the Millennium employees work and how they interact with each other. Can you describe where you came from and some of the limitations before you had this grounding uh, Office 365 foundation and, you know, just some of the ways that people would interact with the service or uh, the lack of a service originally? Sure. Thanks, Mark. Our workforce We employ around 5,000 employees are scattered across the 600 sites that I mentioned earlier. So we'll have staff located at shopping, shopping centres or commercial building and what have you. That in itself was a challenge. So in the previous environment, most of those 5,000, I would estimate only, I would estimate only three to 400 would have had access to any of our IT systems. And that was literally uh, a limitation on the, on the previous solution. And I guess another uh, contributing factor was the cost of deploying the old solution out to more people it was just cost prohibitive. So Office 365 has now enabled our reach to reach all of those employees in one one form or another. So whether that be a cleaner on the floor with their own personal device, in most cases that would be some sort of smartphone, being able to access our intranet to an office-based employee who might have the full suite uh, of the Office 365 platform. So what, I guess, a a key turning point from a business perspective was the licensing model um, that 365 has enabled us to do that. I guess being able to tailor that licensing to the appropriate user. So, we, you know, we have frontline workers who don't need all of the 365 suite but it still gives them a connection. And and that in turn has also created uh, a a connection to our organisation. You you could imagine that in a lot of cases, these staff 
would generally not even see a Millennium office quite often could get confused as to who their employer was. By having this reach and now being able to, for example, enable the CEO to broadcast messages, do podcasts or video snippets and getting communication out to the broader team now gives them a better sense of community with Millennium. So it's enabled that reach tremendously uh, in order to do that. So I think Generally, that was the biggest impact or the first impact that moving to this new platform gave us in terms of how we collaborate uh, as a broader company. Hamish, your team focuses on helping customers realize this modern vision or this move to the digital workplace, um, but it also has a focus of cultivating the inclusivity, which I heard David speak pretty clearly about, you know, folks that maybe felt maybe not even aware who their parent company was, but in essence, feeling a little uh, separate from what it is that they're doing day to day, maybe not having a channel back. And certainly it sounded like initially there wasn't a channel or a broad channel out. Can you talk about how you brought the way that you approach the value of Office 365 and how you bring it to all your customers? Uh, and then specifically just on, on some of the things that you saw were no brainers got to do when it came to working with Millennium? Yes, thanks, Mark. From a Millennium perspective, initially, the, as David was saying, they have staff in disparate locations. The current infrastructure and the current services wasn't allowing them, as you said, both to communicate, but also to those individuals to work in both a well-managed and secure environment. So one of the first pieces of the puzzle for us was to ensure that technology could get in the hands of that all their staff, doesn't matter where they're working, in a well-maintained and managed fashion. And a good example of that is that's, that's turned in, uh, into now is what we've been able to do is roll out some of the um, device management tooling through Intune and so forth. And what that's come to light is just recently, one of the applications they needed across their fleet, the application provider fully changed their model. Um, in the past, that would have required um, David and his team to go out and touch over a thousand devices um, manually. Um, what we've been able to do here is effectively repackage application and push out to those Android devices sitting out on their broader network. So from the perspective of giving people a secure way to work in a digital fashion was sort of the grounding point here. From there, it was the collaboration tools which sit on top of the platform. So to be able to reach the audience, as David was mentioning, through tools such as Yammer and have Yammer then integrated into the intranet platform, and then into Teams. So they have effectively what we like to call a modern digital workplace or the integrated digital workplace where there's effectively a one-stop shop that is very easy, transparent, and frictionless for the users of the platform to get to the information that they both need, but also allow the centralized comms team within Millennium to then not only um, target the entire organization for content, but be able to then push particular messages to particular people in the organization. We're looking forward to that then improving. There's obviously a um, whole of new information came out as part of Ignite, the, the, the tighter um, connections between news from SharePoint and the um, posts within Yammer and then the notifications with Teams. Mm. That's going to be another exponential jump in regard to how David and his team can get communications out to his staff. I mean, you're already painting a picture of a multitude of types of communication and then, of course, on different types of devices that are now more connected and easier to manage. So I know where Chris is going, but just the, the quick wrap up, it feels like you have a good foundation, really more honed conversations, both a two way street. Uh, and devices that are not only um, efficient and sufficient, but also probably more in compliance as well. Yeah, I actually want to ask you to a different question, which is kind of understanding this journey that, that you've been on together. Um, when did the two of you first meet? And what was that? How did that come about? David, would you like to uh, jump in on that one? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to answer that. I think it would be probably four years, four to five years ago when I was working at the bank. I was part of my role at the time was leading the SharePoint team at the bank. And that was my first introduction to Hamish. And I suppose having dealt with many vendors over the years, there was something quite unique about Hamish uh, in his approach. And I think for me, it was about he wanted to understand the challenges I was facing into and not just sell me a product. And I was quite curious about that. And I guess as I 
started to work with him, found myself being the receiver of, of quite solutions that were uh, able to solve real-time problems for me. So it's just kept on going from there. And I also know that uh, Hamish lives and breathes the Microsoft products, knows them intimately more than what I could ever possibly learn myself. And so he's always able to bring me what what's new, what's coming up, and that helps guide my decision making as well, knowing what's coming through the pipeline. I'm not sure if you wanted yeah. to add to that, Hamish. Yeah, well, just quickly, uh, Chris, because um, when we were working with David originally at the, one of the large Australian banks, um, he saw, a, I'm going to say, a relatively small slice of our capability. And what he was seeing was effectively, you know, it's called the SharePoint best practice and SharePoint um, bespoke development. Um, team within our organization, not the broader Office 365 suite and um, and our depth in things like device management and compliance and information management. But I'd always ensured that I um, that David understood that there was more to what we would do and there's more that the bank could use us for at that point in time. So yes, as David then moved on to I said, his next role, um, he reached out because I've always got a real open book with all our customers so that guys like David can, can call up, as he said, I live and breathe Microsoft. Anytime you need to call and ask a question about anything new, what's been spoken about at Ignite, what's coming out of the Microsoft world, give me a call at any time so I can provide some advice in that space. So hence, um, when David need to effectively do a full transition of the, let's say, technology operating environment at Millennium, he reached out and we were able to effectively design and then help deliver every aspect of the um, the Microsoft platform within their world. So everything, as I said, from device management to migration, as I said, right through to, you know, the modern digital workplace um, and compliance and so forth. So we like to ensure that our customers can lean on us um, for everything which um, the Microsoft uh, suite offers. You know, you've been engaged on this journey together. It's great to hear how you got started with it. You know, one of the things I really love about Millennium Story is you have so many of the attributes of that we know are common across most of our customer organizations. The need for security. You know, you were working with frontline workers before many of us knew what frontline workers even were. You have to deal with mergers and acquisitions. You know, I understand that you've recently acquired an operation um, out in the West near Perth to expand your reach into Western Australia. You know, before we turn our attention to what's next, what do you know now that you wish you might have known a year or two ago about this journey to help guide our audience about what to consider? That's a great question, Chris. I think with what I know now about the platform, it's almost like, you know, why didn't we do this sooner? Having this this platform is enabling us to you know, do things that, we, that weren't, weren't even possible previously. It's effectively flipped the model, the support model on its head. So in the previous world, Millennium had engaged uh, two vendors. There was a vendor that was being used for the, the Perth operation in Western Australia. And as you say, that company was acquired by Millennium and a, a separate vendor being used for the, the remainder of the company. We were quite restricted by both of the vendors and in order to do anything different or outside of the box was quite challenging. By moving to this 365 platform, we flipped that model on its head into in, in achieving the outcomes that I'm looking to do. That was a light bulb moment for me that it became obvious that getting some of that control back and, you know, you could even argue not only the control, but I would argue better security and governance too around the environment, giving me much better visibility that I once never had. So for me, it was, it was almost like, wow, how long has this been happening? And this is, this is great. I, I get the best of both worlds, a secure, robust environment, but the ability now to invite vendors like a Circle T to come in and help me deliver better outcomes uh, to the clients. And if I think then towards the future for further acquisitions, for example, far easier to bring on an acquisition into an environment like this than what it would have been previously in a more controlled environment where I, I just simply just didn't have that visibility. So it's allowing us to certainly be more agile and implement solutions for the business 
that really you can get up and running quite quickly now, which nowadays, if Millennium is to remain competitive, we, we need that advantage to be able to bring in new services, new solutions quickly, um, and this platform enables that for us. Yeah, so Mark, the um, the conversation David and I had early on was um, around owning your own world and owning your own estate. So came to um, David and said, David, there's no reason why you need to have third parties, other vendors uh, managing your infrastructure by moving to the Office 365 suite. It means now that Millennium is in absolute control of their underlying IT platform and services. And then vendors such as us at Circle T can help David then to get that set up in a the most secure and best practice fashion, but then to be able to hand it over to David and his team to be able to run in an ongoing fashion. So then his team now only needs to then call out to a vendor such as us at Circle T for third level support. So we come in when um, his current support team aren't able to um, potentially solve a problem or for the um, the future state design work. So what is coming next? So the big part of our world is, and especially Millennium is telling or instructing David on what is coming down the pipeline and what products and services and enhancements on the Office 365 platform, it'd be applicable for David and his organization to then pick up and deploy to his user base. David, a a massive change um, for you guys that you said you're in control of your own service platform now, and it's all within your own security boundaries and so forth. To know that you have what feels like and is control of the platform, I hear you saying it moves you from what do I need to buy next to what do I want to do next? And obviously working with Circle T as a partner to help with as a trusted advisor to move you to that. What does it mean for controlling your content? You know, if you're putting trust in this platform and expanding the use of how you manage whatever type of content you have, I I would imagine, you know, with using some of the products uh, and expertise from from Circle T under their Kasama brand, that there would be a lot of use for, you know, how to manage content at scale better. And what I'd love to hear is just if you have a use case or a specific example of how you're leveraging their policy center or the document center or whatnot um, to help you support the business in control and of course in compliance. One of the one of the requirements of our, our business is when cleaning these large shopping centres, accidents, child might drop an ice cream and somebody comes along and perhaps slips on that. Generally, then involves uh, litigation by the people who, who have slipped. The litigation then falls on Millennium as the company providing the cleaning service to that shopping centre and it's up to Millennium to defend its position that it was doing its job and doing it well by proving it was in the area and it had recently past that particular point where the accident had occurred. And we we use a term called a a rotation. So our cleaners operate in 20 minute rotations around the shopping center. And it's very important that we're able to prove uh, that our cleaners are in those positions at any given time. So we have tools that enable us to do that using technology such as Bluetooth, uh, beacons that are positioned around the center. And these systems then record and uh, store that data. In addition to that data, we also have other policy documents and um, procedural documents that are are completed and filled out when an accident or a slip occurs. Now, previously before 365, uh, those documents and the data being stored as I said earlier, was was stored in different locations. And quite often, the litigation might occur three or four years after the incident. And it was proving to be extremely challenging, if not impossible, to find all the relevant information to build a case and defend our position. Now, what we're doing is, and Circle T has been great in assisting, is by having a document management system and policies and procedures that now align with the ISO 27001 standard, it is now far easier to locate the relevant documents and data for a given site. So we're, we're storing all of this data for each the 600 or so sites. And these sorts of solutions that Circle T have helped implement are now giving us that data in a timely fashion, but also from multiple sources. So it's giving us a much better control and able to produce the information that we need uh, when required. So I might let just Hamish talk to the, the technical side of how that works. 
Yeah, thanks, David. So it's um, let's look at it from um, two aspects. There's the front end aspect, which allows for the to ensure that the employees and staff and lean can get to the content they need, so that they're fully aware that particular policies and procedures, work instructions, and so forth exist um, in the environment, and also that they've you know acknowledged that they've read that type of content and so forth. So. Um, we ensure that the the users can get to content easily. And what we do there is uh, both have what we call a self-maintaining intranet, which presents content to the right people in the organization through targeting aspects. It also allows us to integrate directly into Microsoft Teams to allow for that, let's call it a single pane of glass type UI, where we can present the intranet plus also any content associated with um, well-managed resources across the platform in a single location. This is, uh, I saw at Ignite being released by Microsoft, the same type of functionality with a home sites app for Teams. Um, at Circle T, we've been doing our version of the home site app for probably six months, maybe 12 months plus. So that type of functionality is invaluable to ensure people get to the content that they need, to then allow people to, for example, run through checklists of information that they need to acknowledge. That all becomes part of the centralized sort of platform and the knowledge management tools. From our perspective under the Kasama brand, we have then pre-configured and accelerated things for uh, services for policy management, digital asset management, agreement contract management. So we've got uh, the way to get organizations such as William up and running very, very quickly. And this is, um, David pointed out, have those particular policies, procedures, and content aligned to particular controls in um, standards. And as David mentioned ISO 27001. So organizations such as Millennium can have an automated review cycle of any of the policy procedure and other documentation which is associated with that certification. So we're able to couple both the controls that Microsoft measure against and provide certification for, plus also the rest of the controls that the organization need in a single plane of glass. And the beauty of that is we're using as much of the Microsoft stack as possible. And obviously, in the security and compliance center, that gives us a massive leg up, um, us and organizations such as Millennium. And we're effectively filling in the missing pieces slash the pieces that Millennium need to handle. What this allows David and his team now to do is to be able to use the e-discovery tools and to be able to pull together content very quickly. So we like to call that reduced time to content. So reduce the time to getting to the content that the organization needs mm. if they're in a, um, in a legal case type situation. And underpinning that is ensuring that the organization is retaining the content for as long as they need due to regulatory compliance through the records management capability on the platform, which has been fantastic that that sort of functionality has really arrived in earnest over the last 12 months or so. So the model we've got with Millennium and we have elsewhere is that the Microsoft suite can handle the workloads that in the past might have needed additional add-on such third-party tools, which live outside of the NAB, sorry, outside of the Millennium security boundaries. So it means that David is in full control of all of his data and it doesn't need to leave um, his estate. It's really been great kind of getting the recap of, you know, where you've been on this journey. I really would love to get a sense of, for both of you, when you are trying to understand Microsoft's vision, what's coming, what's near term, what's long term, how do you stay in touch with it? And what are some of the things that you've heard about over the past few months that you are most interested in seeing us bring out into the market? Chris, we stay in touch, obviously, via consuming the multiple streams coming in from Microsoft. It could be anything from uh, participating in the Ignite type conference, which is obviously available to anyone out there. And this year's content has been um, fantastic and very accessible. The feeds which come through the Microsoft Office 365 admin tooling is fantastic as well. And it becomes down to us to be able to disseminate that type of information, which we see is appropriate for our customers. The piece of the puzzle which are really going to bring this world to life for Millennium is some of the um, the Cortex capability. We've already started to implement the ability across the top of the agreement management functionality to be able to pull knowledge slash information from incoming documents and contracts and so forth into the organization. So that helps with routing of content to the right individuals. May they be part of the legal team or procurement team? and automated filing of that content. So that's going to be a dramatic saving in time. 
The other piece, which is um, big for Millennium, and I'll let David talk to some of the business functions around it, but that is around the back office automation. The tooling which allows Millennium and other customers then to infer information from incoming purchase orders, accounts payable, invoices, all that manual work, which I know David's got a sort of a team of people working on to be able to reduce some of that manual effort and um, reduce risk in, um, in some of the, uh, the manual processes in regard to that. So David, just hand over to you maybe to quickly talk about some of the back office automation that we're looking to put in place with Cortex? Yeah, so going back to your original question, Chris, I guess the way I get information on from Microsoft and what's coming up is normally attending conferences and hopefully one day that that situation will return again when I can attend a conference in person. But secondly, through partners such as Circle T, so Hamish and his team have already digested and then are helping to translate into how that might help uh, in my organisation. So they're probably the two main sources uh, for me. Two areas that I think Microsoft will help us with into the future, and this will improve, I guess, over time is, we've touched on it a bit today, is is data management and just being able to access and, uh, I guess, get uh, find the right information at the right time. And as Hamish mentioned, uh, process automation. Um, I see a great area here where processes could be automated on the platform. And Hamish did mention, for example, purchase orders where in the process of implementing a, a solution at the moment for our accounts team to be able to process purchase orders and invoices and link those two documents together as they're coming into our environment from our various suppliers and have the ability to, you know, for example, identify key fields on an invoice that would link that to a purchase order and save the amount of time that our accounts team is spending on doing that. So already in the early stages of, of this new solution, we've saved around 10% of time that the accounts team is spending just in processing those invoices and purchase orders just to enable a, a far better streamlined process uh, for how those documents are received and obviously being able for us to get those into our system for payment. Um, so that's where I see, I guess, the benefit into the future. For me, the 365 platform was the foundation and the tools that are being now offered and uh, provided by partners like Circle T, I, I view as as the, the cool stuff. That's what's really going to give us uh, a real huge step forward in our competitive advantage in what we're doing. I can imagine, you know, saving people time searching and looking for things. You know, we always talk about that content finds people now more moreover than people searching and hunting for content. But to hear the benefits and value that both our platform and, and the value that Circle T brought in giving you that more cohesive experience, I think, again, with people that leads that as the most important thing, but what is really behind what what helps your individual employees, both from the headquarters out to the branch offices, out to people on the floors doing their job, is to help streamline and bring that all together and not have it be a headache, especially, as you mentioned, when something like a litigation comes up, you really do need to have everything buttoned up and, and be able to present your side of the story as best you can and, and really pleased to have heard that that is all coming together and that, of course, to what you had said around the platform, being able to grow from it, that you have plans for what's coming next, which is a real pleasure to hear. would love to kind of get a sense. One of the things that we love to share on the IntraZone is upcoming events. And these days, we know most of them are virtual. But, you know, are there any places or best ways that our audience can, you know, keep tabs with, with Circle T, with Millennium, things that, you know, blogs that you may write? Yeah, Chris, I can um, can jump in there. So for us, it's ensuring that the said the dissemination of knowledge is becoming more broadly available. Uh, you mentioned for how much information the, there is out of how do we get data information. We're going to be doing in Australia um, some events around uh, the information management on the Office 365 platform. Um, that is just to ensure that we're working alongside the um, local Microsoft cohort, so we can then bring as much of this information to the um, to our Australian customer base and more broadly, and have a real focus on how the micro Microsoft tool set applies in the Australian landscape from a regulatory perspective, but also just the way we work being such a, um, a large country with people, as you mentioned before, spread out um, broadly and then also 
some of the constraints that then COVID puts upon us and how the technology can help to, um, as Dave was saying, both automate processes, but also then bring people more closely together on the suite. So we're looking forward to bringing more of the um, information that we have and work with you guys on to the um, the rest of the, um, the Australian organization base. We've got a pretty good feed across our LinkedIn, our Circle T LinkedIn um, profile. So we intend to become even more active over that to disseminate as much information as possible. The um, Circle T LinkedIn feed is a good uh, resource as well. Well, we'll make sure to highlight everything in the blog that we have as a companion and in, in the show notes for links to those sessions so that anybody who wants to engage with Circle T uh, and learn more about information architecture and a lot of what you offer in terms of policy management and just the use of Microsoft 365 as best as you would in Australia, as you said, with some of the regulatory requirements. It's been a pleasure talking with both of you. Really appreciate your time sharing your story of working together and, and more about how your companies are moving into the future and, and adjusting their landscapes best for you and your employees across the whole landscape of Australia. So thank you for sharing. Yes, and thank you, Mark and, um, and Chris and team. Um, it's a pleasure to be able to share. I um, want to also thank the rest of the team involved with sort of the Project Cortex and content services space. It's a pleasure working with all you guys over there in the US, and we're more than happy to be bringing that knowledge and information out to our side of the world. Thanks again. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Chris. It's been thanks. a pleasure. Up next on the InfraZone Partner Edition, upcoming events. If there's something going on around the world of SharePoint, Microsoft 365 and beyond, we want to focus on it here, whether it's physical or virtual. Mark, what are some of the events that we're tracking here on the InfraZone? Yeah, you know, we, we've closed out a number of great events with the Microsoft 365 Collaboration Conference, Global Con 4. There's a lot of the, the work that you did with some of the ECM focused uh, events. I think we've really got a couple that are recurring events, not just one single event. Um, the one that comes to mind is the SharePoint Fest virtual workshops. And these are workshops that cover everything around products like SharePoint, OneDrive, Power BI and Teams. Um, I held a Microsoft list session. I'm signed up to do that again in January. Uh, uh, and you had mentioned Sue Hanley a little bit earlier. She's got an information architecture uh, in the early part of January. We've got a SharePoint framework workshop coming up from our friend Andrew Connell. So there's always a lot of great depth in these workshops. Uh, they're easy to get into. They're about four or five hours long each, and they're at a, a nominal cost, really good uh, value for your money. Uh, so definitely check out the SharePoint Fest virtual workshops link that we'll put in the show notes uh, and find a workshop that works for you. You know, SharePoint Fest has always been such a great part of our community. And uh, I know that they've projected out some dates, fingers crossed, for returning to some live events in 2021, which I am eagerly looking forward to. I um, Personally, I have enjoyed over the past couple of years, usually getting to engage with them, at least in the, at their Chicago event, which happens in early December. So yeah. for our listeners out there in Chicagoland, sorry, I won't be there. The uh, You know, getting to... Visit Chicago. It's just such a great city. It lights up so well for the holidays. It's it's just so beautiful. It's actually not all that cold in December um, with German Village. Really looking forward to seeing SharePoint Fest return there next year. Yeah. And and just because you brought it up, I, I literally had just entered in some dates and some information based on an email that they had sent that talked about SharePoint Fest Dallas, Chicago, and DC. Obviously, there are things that could change with COVID and travel and, and postponements, um, but starting in May and then through, through the latter part of the year, uh, they do have three events that they are beginning to plan. So definitely check out virtual workshops and possible in-person events in Dallas, Chicago, or DC. Well, Mark, I think that's a wrap on another successful episode of the IntraZone Partner Edition. I want to just extend a special thanks to our guests, Hamish Toll from Circle T and David Benjamin from Millennium Services Group. You can check out our show page for links to all that we discussed today and more. Go to aka.ms slash the IntraZone. If you're interested in other shows by Microsoft, check out aka.ms slash Microsoft slash podcasts. Send us your questions or feedback for the SharePoint engineering and product teams. You can email us at theintrazone at microsoft.com or on Twitter at SharePoint 
at mcashman and at cmcnulty2000. And of course, we hope if you enjoy the show and you want to help others find it, please rate and review the show. It really does work and helps us get the word out, find those people that you think will benefit from the Interzone so that they can discover the show and, of course, keep sharing it with other people. Please share that SharePoint Interzone love. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks again for listening. We're your hosts, Chris McNulty and Mark Cashman, and you've been listening to The Interzone, a show about the Microsoft 365 partner-powered intelligent internet.